Good evening to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion. Discussing Hurricane Dorian now, I would say definitely knocking on the door of becoming a Category 5 just based on satellite presentation. We will wait for aircraft data to confirm or deny that, and the National Hurricane Center will have the official word on that, presumably for their 8 p.m. intermediate advisory. I've got Brent Lynn behind me over there, crunching the numbers, checking out the latest stuff. We've been hanging out here for the last couple of days in Wilmington. Uh, we thought we'd be heading to Florida yesterday and getting ready for Dorian to just barrel across the state. It does not look like it's going to do that any longer. Uh, it doesn't mean there won't be any impacts in Florida, because there certainly will be, and how severe those impacts are or not will depend on how far west Dorian gets before the steering mechanisms collapse and allows it to turn more north over time. So that's what we're going to discuss this evening. First of all, a look at the satellite picture here, this loop from tropical tidbits to kind of give you an idea of the uh, satellite appearance. This rounded structure of the central dense overcast, incredibly well-developed eye, the core, very cold cloud tops as the convection or thunderstorm activity pushes up against the bottom of the stratosphere. Just a tremendous energy machine out there over the very warm waters of the Atlantic. Now you can definitely tell it's beginning to slow down the forward speed and if you remember earlier today it was moving right along straddling that 26 degree latitude line like that well let me draw the line again clearly it's moved north of 26 degrees latitude by just a little bit but if you just follow that line there it looks like it's rolling right on top of that line doesn't it it's almost like it's moving due west you know, which is 270 degrees on a compass rose. Um, and so we'll have to see, does it keep doing that or does it distance itself? You know, does it keep going west like this or does it start to separate from that more and head off to where it would go to the north of Abaco over here uh, and of course Grand Bahama or what? So this is going to be very critical over the next 24 hours, 36 hours or so in terms of what happens over here like at Marsh Harbor and elsewhere in the Abaco area, uh, Great Abaco, and Grand Bahama. Um, just, you can only imagine the anxiety of people there with, you know, what is just almost a Category 5 hurricane coming right at them. Swells from this incredible source of wind energy will radiate out from the hurricane in all directions, but in this direction here, They'll start me reaching the Bahamas if they're not already there. I mean, they certainly have to be down here, you would think. And they will eventually reach the southeast, and with people vacationing one last time, or not, <laughs> just usually this is the last unofficial weekend of summer, Labor Day weekend. A lot of people at the beach I know here in Wilmington, North Carolina, Wrightsville Beach is real busy. So please be careful out there. That wave energy can be dangerous, dangerous if not respected. All right. So this is the UK Met, the United Kingdom Met Office global model, and I found this on Storm 2K, that's a message board, and I wanted to show you just an example from the 12Z run today of why we can't just dismiss this as, oh, it's going to recurve and miss everybody, forget about it, so be it, it you know, it, it went over St. Thomas, St. John, and that's about it. Nope. You know, we, we don't know that for sure, that it's not going to hit anyone, the core. I remember when I say it, that I always follow my rule. What are you talking about when you're talking about it? It, in this case, meaning the core. Each of these little points here represents the center, and all these lines in here represent the center, or the eye of the hurricane in this case. And so what we have are these ensemble members. Remember, the different models have different ensemble members that make up the model package. And in this case, the red is the deterministic run, the main operational run of the UK MET model. And I'm trying to draw over it in blue, uh, doing an okay job there. It's like kindergarten level stuff. but uh, And it comes fairly close to everything. It's kind of like Matthew uh, in 2016. Of course, you remember Matthew kind of came up and did this number on approach like that, and it was very similar and you know, it actually made landfall near Charleston 
and what have you. So it reminds me a lot of Matthew's track, definitely. Uh, and we'll look at the um, GFS here in a moment, the latest run from that. So the red line that I'm coloring in blue is the operational there. And then this green line, and let me zoom in so that you can see this better. The green line is, um, and do I have a green color? I do, so I will highlight it. This green one is the ensemble mean, the average of the ensembles, right there. And yeah, you can see as clear as I can, that's right into the Florida Peninsula. So, wow, you know, it wasn't even mentioned, this, this, none of this, in the 5 o'clock advisory, for whatever reason. And I'm not passing judgment, I'm just making an observation. This was not mentioned, uh, per se, you know, specifically. So the ensemble mean is left, west, left, whatever, of the operational, the red line. The UK Met seems to have a westward bias or a left of track bias over time. What I've read about it over the years. So I don't know how accurate this is. The question would come up. Well, how accurate do you think that could be? Do you think that could happen? Well, yes, I think it could happen because the hurricane, and I'm almost being silly here, it's way out here still. So yes, this could still happen. You know, the ridge that's out here could get a little beefier and shove it in short wave that's supposed to come down could only come down through maybe West Virginia and not all whatever you know there's a lot of ifs and that my friends is what all of these blue lines represent the ifs what if this happens what if that happens that's how that's taken into consideration by the models very complicated lots of computing power fascinating and maddening at the same time because it makes you just go "Ugh, what do we do and for me, I need to know what to do. I'm sitting up here in Wilmington with a big rental vehicle, loaded, ready to go. Well, it's almost. And um, where do we go? We go down here? Do we stay put? Do I send Brent back to St. John where he's from? What? And, you know, that's just from my perspective, tracking hurricanes. All you people that live down here, you're having to deal with what do I do to prepare? And I get that. I don't have an answer for you yet. A lot of uncertainty still remains a lot of debate and Brent you've seen that it is fascinating if not maddening to see that on uh, Twitter and elsewhere people speculating what if this happens and oh keep in mind this it, what do you think about it I mean you you joined up to help out but now you're getting integrated well, I'm learning a lot that's for sure <laughs> you, learn, you, learn, you learn a lot and going gray grayer at the same time more wrinkles when this is over um, there are no easy answers and so we just kind of look at the data I saw a tweet that talked about that the deterministic models are going to be the the Achilles heel of this system in lieu of short-term in situ observational forecasting yeah <laughs> we're starting to you get these theorems coming up about uh, all kinds of probability versus deterministic and it does start to make you go oh man let me just enough let me get away from that but we can't because we're deeply curious as to what happens for various reasons so let's get on with it this is the 18z gfs the gfs global model stands for global forecast system run four times a day out to 340 uh, 384 hours <sighs> a lot to talk about uh and what we're looking at this is like your ridge area these are heights in the atmosphere um, so the heights are lower. Think of the atmosphere like a topographic map. You have your surface pressures with these isobars and here. There's the hurricane. Those are the major players. Okay, so let's just go through the, whoops, the various, we'll just step through using the arrow keys. All right, so that's the initial map. Now we're out to 12 hours, or that's the analysis. There we go, six hours, 12. All right, there's 24 over the Abacos. That's what I call it, the Abacos. Uh, close to you know the Grand Bahama area with hurricane force winds. The resolution on this, we can't zoom in tight enough to show you. Well, where does the core actually go? I am looking at the overall envelope of the system here. Where does the system as a mass end up tracking? And I want to show you as we go through here, it does seem to get a little closer to Florida this time. You see that? That is getting... That's getting it in there. You know, we go back in time, 
See that? It's closer on this run. Pretty darn close to Cape Canaveral. You guys remember this from Matthew? If you live down there, you sure do. Talk about deja vu. Why is it a little bit closer? Probably that it's seeing just a little bit more ridge and the exertion of that air mass keeping it moving along is a little bit more in this run, apparently. So it's a little bit farther to the west overall. And if we keep going out in time, the rest of it is similar to what we've already seen, maybe a little bit farther offshore of North and South Carolina, but not by much. But now we're talking more than five days out up here. So let's just look at uh, to, out to 72 hours. Three days, that seems reasonable. All right, so let's go to 72 hours. That's what the 18Z shows. I want to try to get this to where I can compare both of them. Let's do this. I should have done this earlier. My fault. That's okay. Here we go. We get them lined up. That's close. Nice job, Mark. I did it. So there's the 18Z. And you see Dorian down here. Now watch what happens when we go and compare it to the same time at 12Z. Click. Oh, it messed me up. Dog on it. That's okay. <laughs> wah wah. Can you give me a wah wah, Brent? Wah wah. Thanks. I'll just do it here. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it doesn't. Nope, it didn't. And I'm sure there's a way to do it. I'm going to get it in the comments. That's fine. But what I want to show you, it's definitely more offshore. Um, you know what? I think it's got that. I, I do know how to. Brent, you were telling me about that. It's at the bottom, isn't it? To compare the runs. Yeah, right there. Previous run. Do do do. Yay. All right. I'll buy Brent's a steak dinner tonight for that nugget. Thank you. All right. So let's make sure we got the right. Hey, what? I, I record this live. I don't edit it if I screw up. It's the way it goes. But I'm trying to show you something. So there's the 18Z. Uh, and now I can scroll down. Woohoo! That's the 18Z at 72 hours. That's the 18, the 12Z at 72 hours. So, see? So that's earlier. Now, 12Z, 18Z. It worked. <laughs> Thank you, Brent. 12Z, 18Z. And while normally you wouldn't say that that's a big deal, but when you start getting it closer, what is the zero Z going to show? Is it going to go back this way? Or will it continue this and be even closer and even closer with time? I don't know the answer to that. So we'll have to wait and see together on social media, tropical tidbits, whatever your model site of choice is. A couple of things that we also know. For the last day or so, something like that, the Gulfstream 4 high altitude jet data has not been updated in the modeling. That's where they fly the Gulfstream 4 out there. You know what? I think I put this on Patreon. I want to just give you uh, an idea. Type in, let's see, my links here. Gonna show up for me. Come on. I'm afraid if I hit P that it'll pause the, um, the stream. Dog on it. I can't get to my post. That's okay. The Gulfstream 4 jet, the 18Z version of Mark's update is not working properly. That's okay. Um, I got a lot I want to tell you, but I'm trying to also condense this because I realize I go a long time sometimes. But the Gulfstream 4 data should be back in the Zero Z models. They were having some problems earlier with equipment. There might have even been a piece written about this in the Washington Post. Google or look on Twitter for the Capital Weather Gang and they may have uh, tweeted something about this from the Washington Post. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on. You guys know that. But that Gulfstream 4 data, they go out and they fly in the environment ahead of the hurricane, dropping these drop sons around to give them a vertical profile of the atmosphere. And it helps the models initialize better. So, you know, it's, it's data coming in. It's more input. We haven't had that to a great degree like we're going to have on the zero z run evidently again the stuff i'm reading some of that data was incorporated into the 18z how much was it 10 percent 30 percent i don't know i'm just telling you what i'm reading out there 
and at least nothing's like crazy where you're like, oh, come on, Mark, that's that's hooey. I did. I read that you know some of the data did make it into the 18Z run. More of it will go into the 0Z run because I think they're still flying, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. I don't know everything. But the bottom line, you wonder, does that is that why this is a little bit more west uh, at the 18Z run? So we can speculate all we want. Uh, the best thing is to remain, you know, aware and alert as to what's happening and be prepared to act if you need to. We know that a tropical storm watch is in effect for parts of Florida. And that being said, I think Brent and I are going to leave Wilmington and head down here to New Smyrna Beach area uh, tomorrow and wait and see what happens. You know, maybe set up some equipment. You know, there will, there, like I said, there will be impacts. Those swells are going to start impacting this area. And we're going to be right on the beach there. One of our supporters is letting us use his condo right there on the beachfront, same place I stayed for Matthew. And so I'm pretty sure we're going to do that unless the zero Z runs come in with some track that's like this. And it's like, all right, close up shop. This hurricane is over. Forget it. Everybody go home. Nothing to see here. But I have a suspicion, a hunch, some of this data coming in, we may see more changes to the west. We'll see. All right, so you guys have a good evening. Try to step away from it if you can. I know, easy for me to say. But if you can, step away from it. Read a book. Do something with friends or family. Go see a movie. Hey, you can rent uh, the 2018 Tracking the Hurricanes off of Amazon Prime. It's on Amazon Prime Video. Search Tracking the Hurricanes 2018 if you want something. Well, it's not really stepping away from it, but it's something different than staring at the models. Sorry, microphone. Uh, and social media all the time. We're going to go to dinner later and still talk shop, but we're going to put our phones away and try to focus on camaraderie rather than what's it going to do next? Because as Brent will tell you, it's getting to be quite maddening. And he's getting a taste of it back there. All these people that are like, man, I'd love to help you out and whatever. It's like, oh, really? You come hang out, Brent will be the guy that t is, will testify that it is... It is not all you think it is. Once you get going, though, it does become exciting in the prospect that we get to set up equipment that can make a difference in understanding what these systems do. That's the exciting part. Not excited that people's lives could be changed, that's for sure. Have a great rest of your evening, as always. Thank you for tuning in from whatever device you happen to be tuning in from. I'm Mark Suttoth with Brent Lynn behind me. He's actually one of our patrons from Patreon, helping out both physically and fiscally. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Have a good rest of your evening. I'll talk to you again with another video discussion tomorrow morning.